Hello guys, welcome back to the European World Championship Qualifier 2016. I'm here with Joshua Schmidt. Hi. Hello, well done. Thanks. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about your deck, yep. a little bit about your journey here. Um, why did you pick Pendulum? Um, I feel like it's one of the only decks that can consistently beat Monarchs and BA, which Monarchs. are like, the, they are the biggest decks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of unusual for me to play something that is like not considered the, the biggest deck yeah. right now, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah. So, um, well, like for this format, there's no real uh, like top contender. Like they all of the this everything can win. Like monarchs can win, uh, BA can win. Um, I like hearing that because I've been saying this all, all weekend. Yeah, <laughs> but, but that's how it is. Like if monarch goes first and just has it, you know, there's just not much you can yeah. do. And this is like one of the decks that um, it is super strong going first, yeah. but it also has a lot of power going second. If you lose mm -hmm. the dice roll, like I in Swiss, I only won I think three or four dice rolls. That's and uh, I, I still I still went. Uh, through Swiss pretty well. Yeah, I, I keep saying there's no best deck. It's just a matter of you sometimes have to pick your deck and then tailor it to beating some of the yeah. other ones. So did you do that with your deck? Did you think um, you know some of the decks are going to have I'm going to have more matchups against those throughout the days? Uh, well, like the best matchup of this deck by far is um, Burning Abyss, simply because Kir Sorry. Kirin is like completely amazing. Like like you saw in game one, my hand wasn't even that great. All I could do was summon Kareem, but that is enough. Like it, it helped me to get like three or four more draws. Just like yeah, we we've been we've been having this kind of a joke running on the stream about the about me doing a rating system for mm -hmm. openings, and your opening was was really awful. Yeah, it was not. <laughs> but but against BA, if you open Kareem, it still is like a se yeah. seven or eight out of ten. That's enough. It's just fine. Yeah. So I just think it was it was really strange. You had this thing going on where you, you just kept passing, and then he would just be like. Yeah, Kirin. Yeah, pass. you just su <laughs> summon something you can bounce with Kirin, and like, as soon as they have face downs, mm -hmm. especially Fogblade, is uh, it's like really hard for them to actually like go off through Kirin because they only have their normal summon. Yeah. Because he he has the Fogblade face down and he can't even use them on the Kirin. Yeah. So so exactly. he he literally cannot special BAs from hand. So all he has is one normal summon and I can always bounce with Kirin. Mm -hmm. So so I'm just sitting there. I have the eccentric in scale. I don't think I need to pop anything because no, no. at this point I'm pretty sure it's it's like two Fogblades. And so I'm just waiting until my hand gets better. And yeah. Um, yeah. at one point he, he had three fog blades down on the back row. I think it was during the first game. Yeah, and I, I, I knew that he searched. He searched the third one. Yeah, yeah. He, he just he kept searching them and setting them, and yeah, it, was it doesn't just do like anything. Doesn't do. Yeah, because you were just you kind of we, we saw it previously. I'm trying to remember who it was now. I think it might have been Marcel Burry who was playing a, a very similar list to yours. Um, and whenever he was playing against Burning Abyss, it was just. He was leaning really hard on the Magispector part of his engine. Yes, it's, it's all you need. Like you do. You it's yeah, it really is. There's nothing more to say. Yeah, yeah. it's really good. So, um, Kaiku in the side deck. That's it's amazing. You know, people have been using it, yes. but it's a little, it's a little strange. Well, in Pendulum, it's like super strong because you can just Pendulum it from hand with everything else. Yeah. And at that point, the Monarch player is just like, it, it's over. The Stormforth is dead. The Prime, the the uh, the Ether. Um, it's just like if you have Kaiku in a in a solid hand where you can at least put some pressure on the board, it's like it, it usually wins you the game. Yeah, is that kind of like Avian as well? It just if it's in if it's in one of those hands where you get a pendulum summon. Yeah, well, Avian is one of those cards that makes good hands a lot better mm -hmm. and bad hands a lot worse. Yeah, which is why I decided to not run like multiple copies of it. It's actually just the 40th card I put in mm -hmm. uh, because I was happy with the 39 I had and uh, I couldn't think of anything to make the deck more consistent. Because I would have preferred that. I would have. I would have preferred something it's that would have made. Yeah, but uh, there was nothing, so I decided to put the the avian in, and mm -hmm. uh, it's been working. Whenever I had it, it was working good, uh, yeah. well. But uh, it's not like you're dependent on drawing avian, so it doesn't hurt no, you exactly. like, if you don't try it. So. That's really interesting that you say that. That you would have picked another consistency card. Yeah, definitely. Um, I remember I I attended the Irish National Championship mm -hmm. for this year, and uh, Luke Smythe, quite a famous player in in and around the UK, and mm -hmm. even. Across across Europe, uh, he was playing multiple Ignite reloads yeah, for this uh, exact reason. I was playing around with the thought of that, but uh, it's just one of those cards where it's kind of risky, isn't it? Like, yeah. Um, oh yeah. You, first of all, you cannot you cannot play a second one if you draw it, but it's not the only card because it it allows you to you, you can't draw for the rest of the turn. So cards like uh, Upstart are a dead draw, uh, Lizard draw is a dead draw. And uh, it's especially bad against monarchs because if they can if they can ether and then Karazio, you're not allowed to draw cards. Oh yeah. So like that is like super risky to play it against monarchs. And like if you play two, you're kind of likely to see it if you're playing against monarchs. Yeah, that's a very good uh, point actually. Yeah, it's I also it's also like the first side out against monarch like instantly. You just take take it out. Yeah, straight away. There's, no, there's no reason to risk it. It's not even that broken. It's like it's not a plus one or, or anything. 
Yeah. Uh, you're not going to risk the Kurahas on that. Yeah. So has there been a time where you've played a game, you just played Secret Village, and you've just been like, I just win the game? Yeah, three, I played Secret three, Village. three games against Monarchs have been <laughs> like that. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, um, yeah, I've really, I've seen more than one decklist now that's just been playing triple terraforming and just just really relying on yeah. that being... Like uh, really, Sky, really Sky really Iris good. is like the, the best card of the deck by far. Like yeah, I, I think it, it, it made it a is, massive it, difference. I mean, it, it makes like every th every hand is like at least somewhat life with Sky mm. Iris. And, um, you, you can always go search for a scale yeah. to complete your scale. And um, like in this deck especially, uh, I felt like you had to max out on it because even if you draw multiples, um, I'm not playing any other field spell to search uh, in the main, mm -hmm. but I do run the Performer Paul uh, Pendulum Sorcerer, so whenever I do draw a uh, double uh, Sky Iris or Terraforming, I can pop Sky one, uh, yeah. which is cool. Um, yeah, that's cool. Because like, it's not like you have to pop your scales like every time. No. Like back in the day when you were, you, when all your scales were like level fours, it was like super good to pop yeah. them. But something like Unicorn, there's no advantage of popping a level one Unicorn. So you just no. leave it there, pop one scale, pop the Terraforming, and it's all fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's good. And obviously you got the tiny little Magician Engine in here as well. Yes. That was one of those things that I added for uh, consistency. Simply mm -hmm. because, like I said, I was happy with what I had, but it, it didn't just add up to 40. Yeah. So I was like, what can, what can I do to make it like more consistent? And um, so the, the most obvious thing that came to my mind was just play more pendulum cards, play more scales yep. to, ma to make sure you don't run out of scales, to make sure you have a play most of the time. Yep. So I ended up playing like a very small uh, Magician engine because, like I said, I'm not relying too much on the effects. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just relying on Dragon Pit being a really good 8 scale. Yeah. Um, like because unlike Unicorn, it's actually really good to pop it with Sorcerer. Yeah. Uh, because it's a free level seven and yep. um, Oath Dragon solid scale, low scale level two. Yeah. Uh, it's Oath scale Dragon. two. Oath Dragon's fantastic. And and then whenever you are able to Pendulum Summon Sorcerer before you normal summon, which is very often because your only normal summons are uh, Joker and uh, Bunbuku. Mm -hmm. And um, whenever you do that, you have the chance to search Joker and still have your normal summon. And because Joker can search magicians, whenever you have one magician, you just search the second one, it's fine. Yeah, and you can just complete that kind of yeah. little engine just in there. Mm -hmm. All right, so perfect. Um, what was what was Daniela's reaction when when it was at the end of that um, game? I mean, I mean, I know him. He's a pretty nice guy, um, and uh, he he was like, it's just whatever, because he literally cannot win. Like, there's nothing he could have done different. Mm -hmm. uh, if he doesn't open fragrance in game two, there's no chance for him. Yeah, it, when um, he was looking through his deck, actually, during one of the searches, I think there was two or three sat on the bottom of his deck. Uh, yeah, it's, it's unlucky. Like, um, that was the, the one thing I was waiting for when I was drawing, like, what was it, two cards for Maxi and, oh, yeah. and, and another one for Turn. I was just waiting for one Twin Twister MST because I knew if I drew that, that would be completely game over 100%. Um, yeah. If that last face down would have been Strike, um, it could have messed me up a little bit, depending on if he could have, like... Um, won the game on the next turn. Because mm -hmm. if he couldn't have done that, I, I could have still won on the turn after. Yeah. Um, but like the only thing that really would have uh, screwed me over would have been the, the fragrance there. Yeah, right. Well, thank you very much for the interview. No problem. Thank you very much. Good thank luck you. in the rest of the tournament. Thanks. Hopefully we'll see you go away with one of these. That's why I'm here. <laughs> exactly. Um, so we're going to be right back with even more live coverage of Euros 2016.